हेलो व्यूअर्स टुडे इन दिस पार्ट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ वाटर इन क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एज यू नो दैट वाटर इज एसेंशियल फॉर द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ लाइफ विदाउट वाटर वन कैन नॉट थिंक अबाउट द लाइफ ऑन द अर्थ ऑप्टिमम क्वांटिटी ऑफ वाटर इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर हायर क्रॉप प्रोडक्टिविटी इफ वाटर इज डेफिशेंट द क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन इज एडवर्सली अफेक्टेड on the other hand if water is in excess again the crop production is adversely affected so optimum quantity of water is required for higher crop production water is one of the most common and most important substances on the earth surface it is essential for the existence of life almost every plant process is affected directly or indirectly by the water supply and that's why water affect every plant process the metabolic activity of cells and plants is closely related to their water content for example when the young maturing seed is there then the respiration rate is quite high but the respiration rate steadily decreases during the maturation as the water content decreases the respiration rate of air dry seed is very low and increases slowly with increase in moisture content up to a critical level and at particular critical level the respiration rate rapidly increases with increase in moisture content the growth of plants is controlled by rates of cell division and enlargement and by the supply of organic and inorganic compounds required for the synthesis of new protoplasm and cell walls cell enlargement is particularly dependent on at least a minimum degree of cell trigger that's why whenever there is full trigger in the cell then growth occurs whenever there is less trigger in the plant then the growth ceases there is direct effect of cell trigger on cell enlargement as well as cell division now i will describe the functions of water in four headings the functions of water in plants can be summarized and these functions are water may act as a constituent water may act as a solvent water may act as a reactant and water is responsible for maintenance of turgidity in the plants i will describe the function of water as constituent water constituents 80 to 90 percent of the fresh weight of most herbaceous plant parts, and or 50 percent of the fresh weight of woody plants. Water is as important a part of the protoplasm as the protein and lipid molecules, which constitute the protoplasmic framework. The reduction of water content below some critical level is accompanied by changes in structure and ultimately in death of the plants so this shows the importance of water as a constituent a few plants and plant organs can be dehydrated to the air dry condition or even to the on dry condition in the case of some kind of seeds and spores without loss of viability but a marked decrease in physiological activity always accompanies a decrease in tissue water content all the physiological activities are influenced by amount of water and in only few cases at very low level of water content viability is there otherwise in most of the cases the viability diminishes only in case of some spores and some seeds viability exists at very low level of water content 
the function of water as a solvent water in plants act as the solvent in which gases minerals and other solutes enter plant cells and move from cell to cell and organ to organ the relatively high permeability of most cell walls and protoplasmic membranes to water results in a continuous liquid phase extending throughout the plant in which translocation of solutes occur and this is the fact that the plant nutrients are taken by the plants in the form of solutes and the plant meet its requirement for the nutrients now i will discuss the function of water as reactant water is a reactant or substrate in many important processes including photosynthesis and hydrolytic processes such as the amylase mediated hydrolysis of starch to sugar in germinating seeds it is just as essential in this role as carbon dioxide in photosynthesis or nitrate in nitrogen metabolism there is an increasing interest in water as a ligand in chemical reactions and this is the function by which the nutrients are available in to the plant from insoluble form to soluble form and ultimately these nutrients come in contact of the plant roots and taken up by the plants now i will describe the function of water for maintenance of turgidity water plays an important role in the maintenance of the turgor turgor is essential for cell enlargement and growth and for maintaining the form of herbaceous plants turgor is also important in the opening of stomata and the movement of leaves flower petals and various specialized plant structures this is the turgor due to which plant has a specific shape particularly the herbaceous plants now there is adverse effect of water stress on plant growth and i will describe these adverse effect how the water deficit have adverse effect on plant growth water deficit occur in the plant whenever transpiration exceeds absorption it may be due to higher transpiration less absorption or both the effects of water stress are on different plant processes say for example on photosynthesis under water deficit stomata are closed to reduce transpiration entry of co2 into leaf is reduced resulting in decline in photosynthetic rate subsequent reduction in photosynthesis is mainly due to reduction in leaf area the reduction in leaf area may be due to breakdown of chlorophyll reduction of leaf growth tillering or branching and increase in leaf senescence in moisture stressed plants translocation of assimilates is also affected by water stress in this way water stress affects mainly entry of carbon dioxide into the plant leaf and because of the low concentration of carbon dioxide in plant leaf ultimately the process of photosynthesis is reduced and when there is a low translocation of assimilates from source to sink definitely the photosynthesis process will be affected adversely so carbon dioxide and low assimilation of the assimilates both are responsible for reduced photosynthesis under water stress conditions respiration is also adversely affected under water stress conditions however at slight water stress the rate of respiration increases 
but with increase in water stress the rate of respiration reduced metabolic activities are also influenced by water stress almost all metabolic reactions are affected by water deficits severe water deficits cause decrease in enzymatic activity accumulation of sugars and amino acids take place under moisture stress condition due to breakdown of carbohydrates and proteins under water stress both carbohydrates as well as proteins go under the process of breakdown and due to the breakdown of carbohydrates sugars accumulate in the plant and due to the breakdown of proteins amino acids accumulate in the plants hormonal relationship are also influenced by water stress as a consequence of water deficits hormonal balance is altered the activity of growth promoting hormones like cytokine in gibberellic acid indol acetic acid etc decreases and growth regulating hormones like abscisic acid ethylene etc increases the translocation of growth promoting hormones is also reduced by moisture stress with change in hormonal balance growth of leaves production of tillers or branches are reduced and stomatal closure and leaf senescence are increased due to all these processes ultimately growth is adversely affected nutrition is also adversely affected under water stressed conditions as water deficits cause reduction in fixation uptake and assimilation of nitrogen nitrogen fixation by leguminous plants is reduced by moisture stress due to reduction in leguminoglobin specific activity of nodules and number of nodules nitrogenase activity in the nodules is less in stressed plants compared to those which are irrigated moisture stress also delays nodule formation in leguminous crops the uptake of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium is reduced by moisture stress npk uptake and transpiration rate are highly correlated even under mild moisture stress conditions nitrogen assimilation is also affected by moisture stress mainly due to the reduction in nitrate activity in this way under water stress condition plant nutrition is adversely affected when there is moisture stress then the mass flow of nutrients from soil to root hairs is also adversely affected and this is the main process of uptake of nutrients from the soil bulk of the soil nutrients are taken by the plants through the action of mass flow and under this condition the mass flow is adversely affected similarly the diffusion of the nutrients from soil particle to the soil solution is also affected by water stress conditions so these both the processes of nutrient uptake are affected adversely so mainly nitrogen phosphorus and potassium uptake is adversely affected and these are the nutrients which are required by the plants in bulk and due to adverse effect on uptake of these major nutrients ultimately nutrition is affected growth and development is also influenced by water stress as a consequence of water deficits on several physiological processes plant growth is reduced the expansion of cells and cell division are reduced due to moisture stress resulting in decrease in growth of leaves stems and fruits moisture stress affects germination leaf area leaf expansion and root growth the development response of plants to moisture stress depends 
on stage of occurrence of stress. In general, the duration of the crop increases if moisture stress occurs before flowering and when it occurs after flowering, the duration decreases. So, the moisture stress affects aerial as well as root growth. In aerial parts, the leaf particularly, leaf expansion particularly affected by water stress and in sub aerial parts, root growth is affected by water stress. And in fact, the stage of water stress decides the development of the plant growth. Whenever the water stress is before flowering, then the to total duration of the crop growth increases. But whenever the water stress is after flowering, then the duration of the growth decreases. Yield is the ultimate product of the plant and yield is also affected due to water stress conditions. Moisture regime during flowering and grain development determines the number of fruits and individual grain weight respectively. During ripening, which involves dehydration and certain biochemical processes, moisture regime has little effect on yield components. The effect of moisture stress on yield depends largely on what proportion of the total dry matter is considered as economic product. When the yield consists of most or all the aerial parts like forage crops, tobacco, etc., the effect of moisture stress is the same as those on total growth. When the yield consists of seeds, as in cereals, moisture stress at flowering is more detrimental. And this is the main factor that under rain fed conditions, whenever there is stress of water at the time of flowering or just after flowering, then the sometimes negligible yield is obtained from the crops. And in some cases, yield is drastically reduced under these conditions. Similar to deficit water conditions, there is adverse effect on the plant growth and development under excess water conditions. Excess moisture or water logging occurs occasionally due to heavy and continuous rain, lack of drainage or due to faulty irrigation practices. Water logging causes several changes in the soil and plant resulting in reduced growth and in some cases death of plants. The degree of injury depends on type of crops, stage of crop growth, period of water logging and climatic conditions. The susceptible crops for water logging in descending order are tobacco, tomato, chilies, pulses, etc. The most resistant crop for water logging is rice. When there is a continuous rainfall during rainy season, then due to occupation of uh, air space by water, there is anaerobic conditions and the nitrogen uptake is adversely affected. Under these situation, particularly the chickpea plant show the deficiency of nitrogen. And after some period, the deficiency of nitrogen recovers when there is aeration in the soil. Water logging causes injury to the plant due to low oxygen supply to the root system and accumulation of toxic substances in the soil and plant. Oxygen is depleted in the soil due to water logging as air is exchanged with water in soil pores. Subsequently, mildly toxic substances like carbon dioxide, hydrocarbon gases, hydrogen sulphide, etc. 
are produced due to reduced conditions leaching of nitrates and denitrification occurs resulting in nitrogen deficiency. In this way both the things come simultaneously on one side there is deficiency of oxygen and on the other side there is accumulation of toxic substances. Several morphological, anatomical and physiological changes take place in plants subjected to water logging. Shoot elongation, senescence, abscission and production of adventitious roots takes place as a result of water logging. The proportion of arenchymatous tissue in the root system increases, respiration in the roots change from aerobic to anaerobic with the result toxic substances accumulate in roots and damage the root tissues. Due to the water logging, arenchymatous tissues increases in the plant as in case of rice which is tolerant to water logging, there are arenchymatous tissues and as a result of arenchymatous tissues, the plant take oxygen from the atmosphere and this oxygen through arenchymatous tissues reach to the plant roots and the respiration process of the roots is accomplished in this way. On the other hand, due to accumulation of uh, toxic substances, again the uptake of the nutrients is reduced and under reduced conditions, the nitrogen uptake is also adversely affected. Ethanol production increases and activity of alcohol dehydrogenase is more in roots of waterlogged plants. Permeability of roots decreases due to shortage of oxygen. It results in decreased water uptake and wilting symptoms appear even though soil contains excess water. Permeability of roots to nutrients is also reduced due to water logging. So, the water logging condition restrict both supply of oxygen as well as uptake of nutrients. And in case of cotton crop, whenever there is water logging for the period of 72 hours, the crop first show the wilting symptoms, then yellowing symptoms and ultimately the crop die. This is the soil plant water atmosphere continuum shown in this figure. When water is added to the soil through precipitation and irrigation, then it goes to the soil, especially the micropores and then macropores are filled. Then it is taken up by the plant through root hairs and it goes to the plant system. Most of the water is used for transpiration and some part of the water is used in metabolic activities. Simultaneously, evaporation of water from the surface of the soil also takes place and in this way, the transpiration and evaporation, both these process add water to the atmosphere, which ultimately again come to the soil through precipitation or irrigation. Today we have discussed the importance of water in crop production as water acts as a solvent, as a constituent and as a reactant in plant processes. It is responsible for maintenance of trigger in the plants. Whenever there is shortage of water, then the plant growth and development adversely affected. Cell division and cell enlargement seizes and the plants show symptoms of water deficiency. Ultimately, due to dehydration of the protoplasm, the plant die. Therefore, the optimum quantity of water is essential for higher crop production.